Chapter 28 There it was again, that tightness in his chest, just like the last time, warm and electric, the feeling spiderwebbed outward from his chest to around his neck, down his back then straight to his arms and fingertips. Now any medical professional would without hesitation inform the Quan that he was displaying key symptoms of an abnormal heartbeat and or anxiety. But Laquan knew that wasn't the case. He knew this feeling that surged through him midway through his single donut roll was anything but. For one, the feeling emanated from the jewel concealed beneath his uniform shirt. This mystical jewel, referred to as the blood gem by the hero formerly known as Bloodwind, but also called the heart of Anamdi by the young girl Ferne, that unbelievably intense preteen from the parallel Earth Moja. This is the third time in the last two weeks this feeling has hit Laquan. So, he knew that this was something else. This was a warning. He stood up straight, leaving the half-road hose to fall to the ground. Laquan turned slowly, surveying all the rooftops adjacent to the firehouse. He saw nothing, but his gut, as well as the heart of Anamdi's persistent pulsation told him something was out there. They were out there. Those beasts a Ferne called the Krokota were close. Laquan was all but certain of it. But why aren't they attacking him was the question. What were they waiting for? He stood there staring at the rooftops, nursing the eerie feeling like an old sports injury. Then, just as fast as it had come to him, it was gone again. They were gone. Laquan held his gaze a moment more, then went back to rolling the hose. He'll speak to Ferne later. It was clear they were out of time, and he believes she should know. Are you sure, Laquan Stono? Her words hit him with a level of scorn and disappointment that matched that of his own mother. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, he replied as he looked around to see just how many sets of eyes were now locked on the two of them after Fernay's sudden outburst. And, to his chagrin, she wasn't done either. Pretty sure you couldn't have been, a Fernay chastened with the authority of an elder. Why did you wait until the third time to tell me? A Fernay looked at Laquan in disbelief, her eyebrows almost touching. Laquan embarrassed now took a step towards her, petting the air in front of him. The look on his face, pleading with her to calm down and keep a level head. Okay, okay, relax, little sister. The neighbors are watching. He whispered through a nervous grin. A ferne flushed as she just remembered that they were indeed not alone. Now, a little embarrassed herself, she dropped her gaze, turned, and grabbed Laquan by the arm and began to walk. This time, when she spoke, she did so with a much lower tone. With as much as you have already seen and done, with all that I have told you, why do you still mistrust what the heart of Anamdi is telling you? What's it telling me? Laquan replied as he shot a Fernie a dubious gaze. So you're starting to think like me, huh? That this jewelry has a life of its own. A Ferne shook her head slowly and let out a soft sigh. <sighs> Honestly, I do struggle with it. But the heart of Anamdi is not jewelry, Laquan. It is not just something to wear to impress onlookers. She looked Laquan in the eyes and spoke like a teacher to student. The heart of Anamdi may be alive. But we do know that it speaks to you, and maybe it can be spoken to. She faced forward, taking in an almost cleansing breath, and milled over the theory. The heart of Anamdi speaks to the ancestors. No one or nothing void of life can, can do that. Only the living can converge with those who have lived. A Fernie placed her hands over her heart as a small smile of acceptance and understanding lit up her face. Laquan looked at Aferne in amazement. He had her by a good eight years, and he would bet money if he didn't know that she was years older. 
She truly has an old soul, as his grand would say. Or was it as simple as she came from a place that forced maturity on all who live there? Yes, that would be an easier conclusion to reach. Between all the training and meditation, she would speak of her home, this moja, and Laquan kind of understood why she would risk uncertainty, leaving there in the hopes of finding this heart of Anamdi. Aferne has asked him more than twice to come back with her, to Moja, to help the people. She believes the heart of Anamdi had chosen him just for that purpose. Maybe that's why he fights so hard to shun the thought of the jewel being alive. Because that would mean what Bloodwind said was more than just theatric wordplay. The jewel had chosen him, and just possibly it was because it did wish to return to this moja to set things right, at least make them better. He had to consider that thought, shouldn't he? To be continued.